this okay software there is the same software here. So while this one might be textual, cultural center has a lot of uh, media objects already. So the same software, okay, if you see the things, okay, they have ten thousand of those things. Okay, can be placed inside the software, curated, etc., etc., and made available to to users. Presently, in the back, in the digital. Ito, uh, there was a Singaporean co company that said we can do that for five million pesos. Okay, uh, halfway through, they're already in their second year. Hindi ko magkano yung system. Kailangan pa daw ng additional hardware. Tapos yung license na binili nila was for five users only. So if you need, you you wanted more users, we have to pay additional licenses. Versus something that we use that's open source, where you can have hundreds of thousands of users and we're not paying any licenses. So they realized na, uh, hey, you know, parang we might have not made the right decision with that uh, Singaporean uh, donation, but it was a donation nonetheless, no? But hindi pa nila ma, ma compete. Uh, when I did my own estimate, they needed close to 3 million pesos just for hard drives to convert the 40, 40 years worth of uh, content that they have. But once that's converted, imagine being able to replicate it to every Tom, Dick, and Harry that wants to make use of the, of the videos. This is uh, from three weeks ago. I asked uh, the president uh, whether Chet had anything uh, along the lines of open source videos and uh, innovations for higher education. Yeah, 
the tie-ups between industry, uh, both local and foreign, with the various uh, higher education institutes to be able to build the talent that they need. We have people like Dr. Barata who has been helping us to link us with various colleges in California to again have a impressive by this happening experience of um, realizing perhaps not having the researches in the As I said, we're, we're uh, improving the basic interventions. So we're in, uh, we use about 86% of our population to be that they never get to finish college. Only 14%. We graduate, um, we hope we use the survival rate for high school. Those that get to high school are only 50% of those who start in grade one. So those are what we're concentrating on. Of course, this is an opportunity to do things. We would uh, ask a check in one to start in one. And um, if it is a student set, we will show you, we will access the same when I start support. Especially the open courseware of, of all the U.S. schools, and give it, giving it away for free. Yeah. In fact, uh, I consulted si, si Senator Coco about this thing, sabi niya, because he goes to Harvard regularly, sabi niya. Well, kung chinalage ka sa intellectual property, eh di tanggalin mo doon sa system, sino na wala? If they say, ah no, no, you're not allowed to use uh, Harvard uh, yeah. Justice, okay, but take that. I've heard say, oh, you're going to take it out because you said, you know, you challenge intellectual property, so we respected intellectual property. But somebody Yale will come in if you don't, if you take away your content. Berkeley will come in if we take away your content. So, are you familiar with the technology adaption life cycle? So, Okay. This is where we are right now. Okay. Before this open source videos, okay, open source courseware gets to reach the masses, there is this it chasm. Okay. Will it be able to uh, what do you call it? Be able to over over hurdle the the chasm? Because there are enough users and you know, the technology was scalable, etc., etc. Okay, or did it die because there's another competing technology, a better platform, etc., and it died. Okay, so I've been working on this thing for four years already. That's why I, I tell you, sa sa na you see some schools submit na now. I I've been using the software, but it's all for high school. Now I'm seeing the golden opportunity, especially for college. And gee, if you remember how much our tuition was in 1981, last semester, do you remember? Okay. Now, our tuition, the Nano School. Now, I, I remember our last tuition, I don't know, Andre, if you recall. 2,400, okay, for the second sem. So that means for the year, we were around 5,000. If you go to the Ateneo website, this is 1981, so you weren't born yet. <laughs> Today, if you, if you go to 2011, you go to the Ateneo website, tuition for one year is 100,000. So if you do the math, 
Magaling ka sa math, di ba? Okay? Si Marlo. Si Marlo yun. Ah, si Marlo. Si Marlo. If you do the math, that's a 10.3 compound annual growth rate for 30 years. From 5,000 to 100,000. Numbers don't apply. Okay. For one year in Ateneo right now, 100,000. Official lang, no miscellaneous expenses, no allowances. Since we're uh, a little bit short of time, I call my project in the provinces FACET. Okay, it's the acronym for Filter F, Academic A, C is Content, ET, Enhanced Teaching. FACET. So if you if you use uh, YouTube and you use Google Docs, it's YouTube and Google Docs, the functionality and the feature sets, okay? E in the local campus, even without internet connectivity. So if you're a, a learning community, okay, may internet o wala, okay? We have access to these videos and other media objects, and we can create and we can learn, even independent of internet connectivity. Because the, the initiatives of the telcos is, okay, we'll give you one year free internet. After that, it's cut. No, one, no one's funding it. If it doesn't have funds, Jen doesn't have funds, what happens? The PCs okay, are not fully optimized. They're just, you know, inside the lab, no users because they don't know what to do with it. Now, they don't even have access to Facebook because they don't have internet access. Okay. Disrupting class is a book by uh, Clayton Christensen from Harvard Business School. And he used Harvard MBAs to, as the researchers to study this phenomenon of online learning. So in this book, which was published in 2008, five years ago, four years ago, they predict that in the next 10 years, the crossover between traditional classroom and online will happen, 2008. Okay, so meaning, at some point, instead of 50-50 already, okay, online learning will be 51% and then moving higher. But that was before the financial crisis when the book was published. So with state budgets right now being cut, okay, they don't have salaries and things like that, more and more people, their learners, will gravitate towards online because they don't have any other choice. 